Kellen, was it in your car so that you, because the, we asked the comms people, yeah. like, knew it. You didn't want to maybe show up to practice with it, but you wanted to make sure you had it for the call up. What is up, everybody? I hope you had a beautiful uh, 4th of July weekend. Uh, welcome in, Jillian Sakovitz, alongside Susanna Collins, and welcome to our AT&T virtual studios. Hello, Susanna. Hello, Jillian Sakovitz. Um, today was good for the soul. This yeah. episode is fun. Uh, we chat to MLS mainstay, uh, wine aficionado, mm -hmm. fashion forward, uh, good for MLS, Kellen Rowe. Um, currently with the Seattle Sounders back in his hometown. And he shares some breaking news here that you will only get right here on the call up. And I'm going to be really honest. It gave me a lot to look forward to in my a life. A lot to look in forward to. In my life. A lot we to also learn to. where, where can you get the jacket? Exactly. Wait, we get so to the bottom. The whole, the whole jacket origin story is shared. So um, there's a lot of fun little nuggets in this we, episode. We caught up with him last week. So take a listen. Time now for our AT&T 5G call to the field. We are so excited to bring on a guy that we have wanted to get on this podcast for quite some time, just for the record. Um, he was the third pick in the 2012 MLS Super Draft, current midfielder for the Seattle Sounders, wine enthusiast, fashion icon, shall we say, Kellen Rowe. Kellen, you look like a million bucks. A million bucks. I wish I had a million bucks, yeah. All right, well, don't we all? You totally have a million bucks. <laughs> Just kidding. For our listeners, are. Kellen is rocking what has become his iconic uh, <laughs> coat, green, feather, fluffy it's, it's jacket fur, that he donned. Faux fur? Or I don't I don't think it's real. It's like, it's nice and fluffy. Though. It is fluffy. What animal it's, would that come from? It looks so soft. That became iconic after CCL. Yes. But th this time I have a shirt on, which is nice for everyone. <laughs> He was, he was rocking. Depends who you him. ask, Callan. Okay, so so the the whole genesis of of this coat, this now like iconic coat that like literally is making the rounds in Seattle right now is okay. Seattle Sounders, the first MLS team to win Concacaf Champions League in this iteration, absolutely amazing, historic night, and then all you know the champagne's popping, everyone's having a good time, and then there's Kellen Rowe just busting out this, when I say it's, so it's, if you can't see it, it is a two tones of green and it's like a checkered pattern, but it is fluffy. It is soft. It is bold. Um, you please tell us the, the genesis of, of this iconic coat, Kellen Rowe. Well, one of our, uh, owners is Mac Moore and he has a clothing brand Casual. called Bogey Boys. <laughs> just that. Uh, and he's a, <laughs> Holding brand called Bogey Boys, and we did a few things beginning of the year on Media Day, and this jacket was one of them. So I thought, you know, big game, big moment, might as well make the most of it. Yeah. You know, if we lose, I look like an idiot, but if we win, I look like a hero. <laughs> Luckily, we won. Uh, so it's kind of like ode to him and all that. And then I got in the locker room, and I put it on for the champagne showers, and Stephen Fry goes, take your shirt off now. You're wearing just the jacket. I was like, <laughs> nice. Great call. Genius. Uh, even though it looks, still looked like I had a sweater on with my chest hair, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> and everything starts popping. And then I'm wearing this thing, and it is – everyone wanted to get it wet. Mm -hmm. Everyone was spraying me with it. I had stuff on my head. It was great. Um, and I, I, I go outside to do interviews in this and no shirt, and I'm just like, this is surreal, amazing. And it went viral. Uh, people started buying them off – Bogey boys, and now you see him at the stadium everywhere. Oh, it's, it's look off. what it's you've now, done! All the row jacket online, which is great. Googling, yeah. people are, I kind of want on one. Twitter, they're like, I wore my row jacket today. What? That's incredible. That literally, like, that is that is such a. What is a row jacket? That's run? a legacy. What does a row jacket run you? Uh, a lot. What's it cost a girl that wants to buy one? Yeah, like, could we expense? Do you think MLS would let us expense? Oh. This? <laughs> just hit Last up. time I tried to expense something, it was the wine we sent Brian Schmetzer. I'm just going to leave it at that. That's true. That's true. Um, this is this is incredible. So, so this is a a Macklemore design that is now completely associated with you, Kellen Rowe. Like you are responsible for it. And we were just told 
that there are now this this coat is such a it's such a symbol of the team now that people can go take pictures with the Champions League trophy and this coat. Is that can you confirm? <laughs> people took it with the coat and the jacket. Yeah. Oh my god, I want to do yeah. that. I saw we so many to. people with the jacket on and, and the trophy. I'm just like, this is awesome. Kellen, you're you, a trendsetter. Jacket this jacket has made me more famous than soccer ever has. <laughs> you know, that's Kellen, that's the world. That's all it took. That's the world that we live in, my friend. So on that note, you went hard. You went hard for Seattle in terms of fashion. So we want to know, Kellen Rowe, just how far you will go. We're going to show you 10 outfits, all in the vibe of a green, maybe a little fashion forward. And we want to know, Kellen Rowe, would you say no? So Kellen Rowe, you tell us yes or no to the next 10 outfits. Let me preface this. I usually wear, like, the simplest things. You're a new man now. The new man we'll see we'll see okay yeah. first one. <laughs> is that a onesie no it's it's a polo and oh. shorts the polo yes the shorts are a little rough what's wrong with i the would shorts? wear the polo length length no length you want you a, little a little shorter, shorter. <laughs> i want a little shorter <laughs> a little more i gotta legs? show these legs off gotta i gotta show, show these off. Off. show off the gams okay uh next one absolutely Ooh. not okay although it looks like a rain jacket i don't think it is but it, it is might a be rain jacket. Or is it a rain jacket? Might need that here in Seattle, but no, absolutely not. Okay. Hard pass from Kelly. Okay. Hard pass. Okay. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. That just looks comfortable. It looks like summer comfy. I'm on a boat. Okay. Ooh, I like this next one. Let's go. <laughs> See, I feel like this would be more of like the Riddler kind of vibes. You know, <laughs> I'm wearing that to a party. I'm like the Riddler. And I'm in for it. To be honest with you. I'm I either that or they can be a leopard. Yeah. And I'm not sure I want that one. I could I could actually see you wearing that. Oh, 100%. Right. Yes. That's, I might actually go get that, send that to me. I know. I'll send you the link. Yes, yeah, send yeah. us all the link. Because that right. was next. That was fire. We should all wear it. I know. Next stop. Oh. 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 You know what? I think I would. But really? it'd have to be like some, like, it would have to be some gala. And it has to be with the sounder, so it'd be like yes. the, it. It'd be this, but like amazing. a like a like a charity auction kind of like yeah. charity gala. Oh. That would that oh, would. Right. Uh, yes. It's not. It's not like a party. No, it's a gala. It's a yeah. gala. It is a gala. Yes, we are wearing sequins. It is a gala. Um, okay, I think we've got a couple more. Oh, mm. what? What's on it? Is that sparkles? just a sequ- Is that just like, like sequins? Clothes? Green sparkles. Oh no. No. Okay. No. Nope. No, uh, sparkle okay. enough. Next up. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a hard pass. Okay. That's yep. That's a hard pass for me. I have seen those in the stadium, though. Know? Hard pass. Why is they scare them. they scare me? Wise choice. Okay, is this our last one? Oh. Oh. It is brave. Like green. then, I then you're going this or that. that. That's more of like a this or that. And I'm going this. Yeah. Okay. Not that. All right. Kellen Rowe, I'd say you go pretty far. How far would you go, Kellen Rowe? I'd say you you went pretty far. Fat. I'm, you know, you Seattle. I you think push the boundaries. Yeah. And hey, it kind of seemed like you liked more than I thought you were going to. So if you need a stylist, I'm here for it, Kellen. But I think you really should be styling Susanna Collins um, and I, if I'm totally yes. honest. Yes. Oh, yeah, I thought she was going to stop at Susanna. I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> It's like, well, I am. <laughs> I mean, we're wearing her and I are literally wearing the same shirts today. Need, like, if you're styling her, you're styling can get. me. Well, Kellen, on the style front, like, I one of the things that I um, have always appreciated about you is your is your willingness to uh, to take some risks, and especially with the hair, because like soccer hair is a big passion of mine. I pay attention to these. Things. <laughs> It matters to me, as we can see. Now, this is not a new look for you. Like rock the platinum is is something that we have we have seen from you before. But we've seen you we've seen you grow it out a little. We've seen it like super high and tight. The frosted tips. What would you say, Kellen, is your best look or your favorite look that you okay. have ever rocked? Okay. I thought you were gonna ask worst. I was like, oh, I gotta think no. about that one. Um, my best look. I do like the platinum. Do you? So do we. I like the platinum, like a fresh platinum with like the contrast of the beard. I like uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. How's the upkeep with that though? Like, are you using the purple shampoo? Are you oh, yeah. conditioning? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, it's, it's, it's rough. It's a lot. 
It's, it's a lot hot. of maintenance. I, I, I remember I called my sisters after the first time I did it, and I was like, guys, I'm so sorry I made fun of you. <laughs> when you did it, I'm so sorry. Helen, this is the t- you are yeah. perfect well, for today's Helen, episode. my brother used to steal, I used to use Sunin, you know, that like, like yeah. it's literally just like spray bleach. And it turns your hair kind of like funky mm, orange. My (laughs) brother, like I would go to use it and it would be empty because my brother would have like used the whole thing on his head. And it was so like the dudes are into it. Like I, I, I get it, but I appreciate you apologizing to your sisters because as you now know, it's a lot, it's a lot to take care of. It's that, really, it's, I'm, extra more. Like I used the $20 haircuts. It was easy. Great. Right. And now it's you know, jumped a little bit to get the dye in. To get the, <laughs> Color the is time. fine. And um, just a shout out to our listeners. And I think your I think ownership Macklemore will be happy. You know, on Bogey Boys, the fur coat, the Kellen is in stock, by the way. It won't be Ooh. after this episode. I don't, I don't think this is a crazy price. $298. Oh, I would I buy it. Yes. honestly would have spent that to have the three of us in unison today. A hundred percent. And I would have expensed it to be denied, but I would have tried. Yep. We <laughs> it's always worth trying. Uh, so, you know, try sometimes it gets accepted. Yeah. Um, Sneak it by him. You're coming to us, obviously, from Seattle. Uh, Like Susanna mentioned, drafted third overall by New England back in, dare I say, 2012. A decade later, second season with Sounders, you are back in the uh, place you were born and raised. What has that been like at this part of your career? Oh, wow. Um, Because it's been so long. It was my 10th season when I came back last year. It was kind of that, okay, I'm good kind of moment where if I play as long as I can, if my body lets me, I'll play as long as I can. I'm enjoying myself still. But when I was able to play in front of the Seattle fans, play in front of my family almost mm-hmm. all the time, I, uh, my the people that kind of raised me and grew me in this game have come to games and old coaches, old teachers. Uh, it's It's been really incredible. So when I go into the game and my sister's sitting in the stands waving at me, that's pretty cool moment. Uh, and I can't really top that. And the fact that now that we've won a trophy, the first MLS team to win so in the, in the Champions League, that's everything is just kind of coming in. And it's, it's just a little bit of an extra bonus for me. It's like full circle for you, yeah. Kellen. You know, we love we yeah. love those full circle moments. It feels like it's uh, it's serendipitous. Um, you it's also you spent such a. Such a significant uh, part of your career playing in New England, um, seven straight seasons and then an eighth season uh, total. But um, you're still so beloved there. How would you summarize your time that you spent with the Revs? Uh, I would say it's my second home. It's kind of where I I grew up as well, because I spent almost all my 20s in, living in Boston in New England. So uh, I got there when I was 20. I think I left when I was 28. Oh, yeah. those are formative right. years, formative right? I mean, years. You grow, you grow and become that major adult. You know, I remember my mom's my mom's adult talked to me when I first got drafted. I was 20 years old and she's like, here's all your bills. I'm like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can afford did them you now. Know, Here you go. Did you know how to pay a bill? Like, did you know no. how to go online and like do all <laughs> No. She walked me through Nothing. it like a great mother as she was. Um, but it's it was incredible for me. I think I still think Boston's one of the best cities I've ever lived in. Uh, it's an incredible city. Uh, the fans were great. I was able to, in 2014, start uh, Nigu Crew and have kids come to games. And that really shaped me not only as a human, but as as a player as well and with the fans. Because I think, you know, when I did leave, everyone thanked me for playing, but everyone thanked me for the, the work I did off the field. And that was really special to me because, you know, pe- people may remember a goal here and there, but they'll always remember the smile that we put on those kids' faces. So it was that was really cool for me. And the fact that they're still uh, enjoying that is really dear to my heart. You know what I have to point out to you? Um, one, I was fortunate enough to follow um, one of your Nigu crew uh, inductees, a young girl that you had out, you know, for a match at New England. Uh, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, it's the Never Ever Give Up crew, um, something Kellen Rowe did uh, to give kids diagnosed with cancer uh, a special time, a special moment. And it was just so cool to see them part of pregame and they're out there and, you know, everyone embraced them so much. And I have to tell you, and I hope it's something you feel really proud of when we spoke to Matt Turner about his legacy at MLS as he moves on to Arsenal. One of the three things he brought up was taking on the Nigu crew 
uh, when you left New England. So I hope that makes you feel as proud as it should. 2019 was unique. When you look at your career in MLS, um, you know, you mentioned your formative years at New England, but when you look at 2019, traded to Sporting Kansas City, um, then later that year on to Real Salt Lake, then signed back at the end of the season uh, by New England as a free agent. That has to be tough for so many reasons, but what professionally did you take from that year? 2019 was an absolute whirlwind. Uh, I didn't know where my career was going to go. I thought it had turned in Kansas City. I was playing in the beginning of the time, and then I wasn't. Uh, then I was started playing again and then got traded. So it was just all over the place. In Salt Lake, I played maybe one or two games. It wasn't uh, anything that really helped me in my confidence or my career. And then I get a call from an old teammate, Chris Tierney, who is now working with Bruce. Uh, <laughs> and he goes, hey, would you be willing to come back? I'm like, dude, it's too soon. I just left. I was happy to leave at the time. Things weren't going well in New England. He goes, the thing, everything is turned around. It's 2.0. Bruce has made everything so much better. If you come back, you'll love it. Uh, and like, you know, the, the fans still love you. They always talk about it. You'll be good. And so I trusted Chris because Chris is one of the guys that was like my older brother on the team when I first got on the team. So he helped me grow. Uh, and now that he was done and working in the front office, he, I, I believed everything he said and he was right. You know, Bruce turned that team around, if you look at it. And especially, I mean, didn't help that it was COVID season that I went back oh. um, in, in 20. But it was it was a whole, it was a great homecoming. It was only for a year, unfortunately, but it was a great homecoming. Do you have a Bruce impression we have to ask? Because many of our guests do. <laughs> he does. He totally does. Kellen, what the hell? What the <laughs> He would have never said that to you. And it's the use of other words as well, but it's it's the it's the hands for me. It's the it's, it's, it's exasperated. The, the, the Bruce. I know. Oh, that was good. I got that, that one. Really good. I got that one a lot. Yeah. That was good. It's funny though, because like you, I mean, I that you spoke about 2019 and I you know just like the, the the madness of it. And something that I think that like fans don't really understand or appreciate or see the player's perspective of is is how volatile um the the industry can be for you and that you you know can have to you you might have to be on a plane and on a new team in in two days and here you are in this stretch of time i mean going from skc to rsl uh back to back to new england how as a as a player when when you kind of know that 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 could happen you know that is a situation that you could find yourself in how how do you manage that i mean what is it like kind of being in the center of that cyclone there's uh yeah it, it's pretty wild there's a lot of reasons that guys want those guaranteed contracts because if you do have those option years you can just be thrown around anywhere um you have the guaranteed money you'll kind of play and live anywhere guys with families i feel so bad for i was yeah. single and alone i was fine I, I jumped on a plane weirdly enough when i got traded from kansas city to salt lake salt lake was playing in kansas city that weekend oh, God. <laughs> I flew home. Like, can i was I like can i play did you fly <laughs> with them I, just, I, flew back. I, I flew back through uh, salt lake yeah yeah <laughs> So yeah. MLS, I love it. but I mean, it's, it, it's wild. You know, I know a lot of guys will have this, but you know, relationships get ruined because you're moving all, all different places. You don't get into them half the time. Uh, families will have to be apart for months on end. Uh, it's not easy at all, especially for your international guys um, or even going from Canada to the U S uh, in, mm -hmm. in some cases, it's, it's very tough for uh, families to, to go through those things. And unfortunately it's a common thing. Every year, there are multiple trades within the league, uh, and especially at the end of the season when all that kind of comes about. I, I just, it, I sympathize. I, I'm such a creature of habit, and like I, like I feel like that would just disrupt my life so much. Like it does. I don't know, I, mean, I don't know how you mentally stuff. prepare for it. Yeah, it's tough. Um, Kellen, something I really need to talk to you about is your love for wine pairings, um, particularly the information that you share on social media. Um, I'm always like, oh, that's not a bad idea. Or like I zoom in on the label. I feel like this maybe this developed later, like when you had the comfort to like, you know, post about wine. But like, where did your love of wine come from? Like, when did this develop? And like, 
how far have you taken it? So I started with my folks. They uh, grew up in Northern California, but they love their wine. So every celebration we had uh, when we were adults was shared over a bottle of wine. So, you know, when I was traded for the first time, when I scored my first goal, you know, things of that sort were, uh-huh. were celebrated with a bottle of wine. Um, and so I, I always loved that. It was, it was always a nice moment, and I started to enjoy the wine. And then actually after that craziness of 2019, uh, I, w- I took a trip from San Diego up to Seattle and drove in the off season. It took about a month to do so, and I tasted every day up the coast of California. Oh, wow. Um, I fell in love with the culture of it, the people of it, um, you know, the people pouring, the people visiting. I had such a good time. I remember there was a moment I was actually at Justin in, in Paso Robles. You've probably seen Justin Winery a fair amount of times in the grocery store. Uh, and they had a private event. And they said, look, 20 bucks, just go in. You can be a private member for the day. I was like, great. And like, I see. You know these who I am? Up. I'm Kellen Rowe. I should come for free. Right. right. I, had, I didn't have blonde hair yet. That's why. Or the jacket. Or the jacket. Or the jacket. <laughs> That would have been um, the winery. But I see all these old couples enjoying themselves with the the young couples as well. Everyone was dancing around, having a glass of wine. I just felt so comfortable uh, and knew that I was what I wanted to do. And so I started studying through COVID and started getting some some certifications. And then has kind of turned into now I want to do this when I'm done playing and will be starting my own subscription here hopefully in November. Whoa. Hey, breaking hey, first news customers. on the pod. First customers. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah. Jill. So, you know, it. I have to earn people's trust first, you know, that he knows his stuff. But uh, I've had a few events around Seattle and they've gone to charity, but people have seemed to have enjoyed the bottles that I bring and share. I had one just about a month ago where I shared my own cellar to about uh, 30 people. This is and incredible. And everyone was pretty happy. And we are coming to the next great. one. Five thousand dollars for the charity, and all I had to do is pour about thirty bottles. It was great. We're coming to the next one. So, what, when you say certifications, like, what do you have? And like, could you ever be like a sommelier? Like, how does that work? Yeah. I, could 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 I be? Yes. Will I be? Probably not. Um, that is, uh, you've seen those movies. That's intense. Oh, I yeah, mean, just asking podcasts is not easy. Um, and I, I was telling, uh, it was funny. I was actually telling Coach Metzer about this because he was asking. Because he's a, lo- a wine lover as well. And uh, why do you think I'm in the starting lineup all the time? Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but he asked, you know, when's the next certification? I go, I can't do it. I, I talked to the instructor and she said that I would have to tr- try and like taste and drink about a thousand, two thousand bottles throughout the year. And I don't have the time or <laughs> the, the willingness to do that and still play. Yeah, I was going to say, hard. you're still a professional athlete. When I, when you I, have when my I do, trust regardless. Yeah, I put things out, and so it's not like I'm drinking all the time, but when you're spitting out 30 bottles of wine, that's not easy. It's a lot. That's a lot a, like every time I've gone wine tasting, they're like, Susanna, you know you don't have to like finish every every glass. Like You can like spit it out. <laughs> you and, learn I'm like, and I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? And then just, yeah, I'm like basically like they have to like wheelbarrow me out because I have not learned the concept of – no. Dumping it out. Dumping it out, out, spitting it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think being a sommelier is in my in my future. Um, but this is, Kellen, this is super exciting. I love this for you. I love this for us as future customers. I love this um, for us. This is very exciting. So we've got, you are, I think you're our first guest that we're going to play two games because we knew we oh. would have fun with you and you yeah. would be like super Jeez. down for this. Um, so we're going to do a little wine pairing game. We're going to give you a, a meal, and then you are going to tell us um, what wine you would serve with said Getting meal. Me on the spot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. you don't have to get, like, super specific with years, but, like, yeah. so that the people at home, like, maybe they want this meal tonight, our listeners, and they say, I'm going to grab X bottle, like okay. a Chardonnay. Yeah. Say. Yeah, it can just Take be Take it as far as you want. Whatever. We're, okay. We're, yeah. Our expectations for most things are pretty low. Exactly. Um, okay. So the first one is um, nice dinner out. You get an expensive New York strip steak with uh, some mashed potatoes on the side. What are we drinking? I'm going in one of two ways. You're going to go a red. Okay. okay. And in my opinion, you're going a red. Uh, and you're going to want to, with that steak, you probably go towards the heavier side. So a Cabernet. You can do one of three things. You can go American, Napa, easy. 
you can go as young as you want. You can go as old as you want. All will be well because the tannins will cut through the steak salt and the fat. Definitely well. And then you can do a Bordeaux as more of a blend. You, I would, I would put age on Bordeaux, just because it's a little, it's, yeah, it's tight. It's, mm. it's not, as, it's not as flavorful. You get a lot of fruit, but when the, when it ages, the complexity of a Bordeaux is, is quite incredible. And it's the reason it's some of the best in the world. Uh, and your third option is to kind of like take off the beaten path. I like Rhone blends, so French again, mm. and you can go to Rhone, and I would do, if you can, if you want to spend the money, do a, for me, Hermitage. Okay. Hermitage. Oh. I already feel like I have learned something. I know. Uh, I'm sold on the on the subscription service. I know that much. I'm taking in a little bit of a different direction with this one. Uh, let's say it's BYO B night at Lumen Field. I don't know if that ever happens. And someone gets some chicken fingers and fries. What should they drink with that? Champagne. Yes. <laughs> I love that answer. Was not expecting it, but I like it. Yeah. And champagne, but- you can do champagne or like a white wine, or if mm-hmm. you want to go red, depending on how spicy your sauce is, maybe like <laughs> uh, a Noir or a Tempranillo. Okay. Ooh. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Um, yeah. Just a, like a, a nice night out and you're grilling burgers outside. Uh, an aged Zinfandel. Okay. Uh, a, ooh, go Italian, do like a Barbera or a Barbaresco. Goes good with like a bacon burger. Yeah. I'm hungry now. Barbera is really good with a bacon burger. Um, or a Tempranillo, Spanish. Love that. Um, okay. You made a little trip to Pike Place Market. Um, and you got some West Coast oysters, maybe maybe some salmon. Uh, you're having that type of night at home. Okay. You're going to go a little bit on the sweeter side. Okay. And maybe like a uh, muscadet. Champagne as well, always very good with like an oyster or something. Depending on the fish you got, if you got some fish as well, let's say like a salmon or you could say shrimp, I would probably do like a white burgundy. Go mm. more towards the acidic side. So I'd maybe even do like a Chablis. I'm into this. This all sounds incredibly good. Okay. Um, oh, this is good. I like this one because this is very just relatable. It's like a, a Netflix and chill night. And <laughs> like you're literally just like, hey, like let's pop open a, like just like an easy drinking wine. Doesn't even matter. Like maybe any, you're having some popcorn. Any, maybe you're any, having some pizza. Whatever. Any open bottle for me. If you're, <laughs> if you're having a Netflix and <laughs> Air. It's yeah. an, and it's whatever. It's whatever's open. You want to do pizza? I would do Italian. You know, I like to stick to where it's grown, where it grows, is where it goes. So, All right. you, want, you want pizza? Italian. You want popcorn? Amazing. Maybe like a Chardonnay because it's kind of buttery. Nice. Last but not well, it is the least. Last one. Um, after a win with your teammates. Uh, so after a game, it's hard to taste because I've got really? so much crap going in yeah uh, my, my body's like depleted it's hard for me to actually taste so i don't drink light. that much. yeah like a beer yeah a beer how long does or it take a- for you to like get beer. like your taste back after a game? the next day the next day but you know really we so, many fights, so many different uh things go like and you're you're fully ex- you know just dead to the bone i've got no sense of smell taste like all that is kind of like out the window when it comes hmm. to like actually fine wine. That is fascinating. See, I am Must be so something much. with adrenaline. Adrenaline, the dry mouth from the game. That's so if I don't play as much, it's easy. I can have less <laughs> wine. But if I play the game, it's like I'm He's on the bench. I'm, yeah, all I'm getting is yeah, just decanting. On the bench. Yeah. Decanting with Schmetz. Good job, guys. Cheers. <laughs> um on that note, okay, we should talk a little soccer because obviously this is, you know technically a soccer podcast, but not really. Um, but, uh, Seattle is, uh, I mean, what it's, it's been, it's been so incredible watching them win CONCACAF champions league, um, watching you guys just kind of, this is what happens with this Seattle team, right? It's like, this is their mojo, like regular season, maybe like start off a little slow. Obviously this year focus was on CCL as it should have been done and it all paid off, but now it's like, Oh, here we go. Seattle is, is on the right track. Um, they're, they're on the, on the up and up. Um, you know, what is kind of, what are the vibes on the team 
right now? Are you guys feeling this momentum as well? Do you feel like you're just kind of like hitting your groove at this point? I mean, we hope so. We know, obviously, the beginning of the season, like you said, we were focusing on Champions League, and I think it was a good focus for us. We still played, you know, full lineups and mini games. But we also took a fair amount of rotation because we had a lot of midweek games. Um, but if you look at it, I mean, we've lost some big players in those games. Uh, looking at Jao Paulo in, in the final, we lost Nuhu in the final um, for a game. We've now lost Raul for a few games. Rui Diaz. We've lost Ladero for a few games at the beginning of the season as well. So we we've had those those losses and those are big players, but we've had guys step up. And that's what's really incredible. The 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 re the reason we are so good is because people step up into those positions. Look at a guy like Obed Vargas, 16 mm. years old. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh just just playing out of his mind, really, really contributing as much as um, as much as we have, we have seen has, has been incredible. Um, you have other guys step in. Jackson Reagan is now playing very well, who is, and I've said this before, he's a Chad Marshall. He's 2.0 Chad Marshall. If you look at him now, you know, that's all you're going to be able to see. For that. You're welcome. Um, and so you have those guys step up and it's next man up mentality is what we keep telling him. And it's pretty incredible. The, the run that we've been on. I mean, my two years, it's two finals. We had league's cup and now champions league. It's, I can't get enough of it. I don't know how it happens. Half the time we're like, you know what? This first 15 minutes, we were so bad. And then we went three seconds. <laughs> hey, that's that's what great teams do. To add okay. like more sprinkles to your ice cream on top of all of this, um, just recently Seattle was named a host city for the FIFA yeah. World Cup in 2026. That's it's incredible. Um, we're hoping that we have multiple guys on that team because I think we have the quality for it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Seattle gets this, I mean, we've already had that Pacific Northwest has that soccer city vibes. All of them do. Um, I think Seattle being the best, obviously. But it's it's pretty incredible. And I think the the reason that you really see it is like, look at the Champions League final when you almost had 70,000 people in this stadium. You had the whole the whole city around it. When when they do win the final, when, when games go on, you see a crowd of rave green around the whole city, not just around the stadium. I think you see the love and support of, of this game. Uh, and now the fact that we have so many players that are playing for their national teams, I think it would just create such an amazing um atmosphere but it also creates just an amazing city for people to come see as well because it is one of the most beautiful cities in the world when it does have that sunshine coming in a clear clear sky it, you it, see does it. Happen. it does i swear to god my first like five trips to seattle every single time i was there it was like beautiful weather like i never experienced the rain i was like i don't know what y'all are talking about like this place is uh we could have used you this month because uh we haven't had much heard it was but... a little <laughs> It's a little rough rainy. this year. No, it a is. Rough it's a, year, it's nice. It is an incredible city, and one of the things I love about it, and I know Jill loves about it too, is that when when you when you arrive in Seattle, the the Sounders are so present. It's everywhere. Oh, yeah. You see people wearing jerseys. You see the signage up in the yeah. city. I mean, it is a it is a team that the city has fully fully embraced, and like this, the energy um, at a game at Lumen Field is. I, I mean, it's it. It's top notch, and I'm so excited for uh, the world to to get to see that because I think that. it's pretty pretty darn special. Um, Callum, before we let you go, one of the things that we also like just hugely respect about you uh, and the Sounders organization is that um, you know you guys are willing to to speak out on things that that matter and social issues, and um, it has been. It's been a really rough week for a lot of a lot of people in this country, namely women. And um, with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, um, Seattle, the Sounders, were one of the teams that put out um, a statement, which was which was really cool to see. We saw uh, Stephen Fry speak about it. We saw um, your coach Brian Schmetzer um, address it. And just for you, um, what does it mean? I guess what does it mean to 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 be on a team that that is willing to to do that and and stand up for what they believe is right human rights it's it's what you want uh it, it, you want to be on a team that is supportive of of everybody and not just the the players that they have on their field um it's a rough situation the fact that we can't actually uh do much to you know correct what has happened 
But the fact that we're able to give the support, and that's what I think needs to happen as much as we can, is to give the support to the people that we do love, um, not just our families, but our fans, our supporters, in any way we can possible, our employees as well. Um, I know many companies have given a lot of support in that way, uh, transportation money, uh, any kind of severance money, any kind, any kind of uh, help possible, and I believe the Sounders will do so as well. Um, but I know from the player standpoint that I called, I, I talked to my sisters, I've you know had a conversation with my girlfriend uh, and, and some friends as well who have gone through some situations that um, were helped in, in many times in the past. So uh, it's been a very rough time, but I know that I will always be there for them and I will always be there for someone who has or needs a uh, sense of support, needs a shoulder, needs anything. Uh, they, will, or they, they know they have it within me and they know they have it within my teammates and, and this organization. So I think that's incredible. And I hope that we don't have to keep having these conversations. But when we do, we will be there for it. Awesome. Kellen Rowe, thank you so Amazing. very much. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate you as a person, as a player, as an ally. Um, and we appreciate you as a fashion icon in the league 100%. as well. So thank and you very educating much. educating us on our wine. And as, and as soon-to-be um, clients, we will appreciate your wine knowledge extensively. We look forward to that. What's on tap? Well, Heineken Rivalry Week kicks off this Friday, July 8th with this season's second installment of El Trafico at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. There's no shortage of your favorite rivalries in MLS through July 17th, and we've got a slate of watch-alongs with special guests throughout the week, so head on over to MLSsoccer.com to check out the full schedule. We have a lot to look forward to, actually, Jill, because um, this is going to be an exciting uh, a few weeks, the MLS secondary transfer window opens this Thursday, July 7th, and um, we've got some heavy hitters. We've got some heavy hitters that are coming into the league. Names like Lorenzo Insigne, Gareth Bale, Giorgio Callini, Hector Herrera in this new window. Um, this is like, this is some big, big firepower that are going to be taking the pitch um, in MLS competition. And we are so excited and so here for it. Um, Gareth Bale and Callini would be eligible to debut against the Galaxy in El Trafico. On July 8th. So I'm just saying it. I'm just saying that would be that will I mean, as if El Trafico, um, you know, couldn't get could get any more exciting because it always delivers like add that into the mix. Yes. Thank and you. that Carlos Vela is uh, still and, part of LAFC. I mean, and Chicharito will be there. I mean, the gang's all here. And my <laughs> question is, my question is, when I hear all of this information is who will be the first who will debut on the call up first? Boom. Oh. Mic drop. Okay. Okay. If we had it, let's put it out there. Gareth Bale. Yeah. 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 I we feel got. like we'd have a good time. <laughs> I know. I agree. I agree. All right. We're going to put it out in the universe again. Um, Gareth Bale, your invitation is, uh, is open. Come on. Uh, come on. Come on the call up. We're ready for you. Um, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in, for listening. We love you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Everybody, it is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of the Call Up. And if you want more Call Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of the Call Up every single Tuesday at five o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?